This is your host, Supin Bhartia, and welcome to TFR. Let's talk. And today we have with us once again, Dennis Zimmer, CTO of Code Notary. And today we are going to talk about uh, what Code Notary calls first all-in-one software supply chain security and DevOps. But before we go there, quickly remind our viewers, what is Code Notary Cloud all about? Yes, I mean, pleasure to be here again. So at Code Notary, we actually bring trust and integrity to DevOps. Uh, to the whole software delivery lifecycle uh, from source to production. And uh, our goal from the beginning was that everything that is being trusted, being developed, built, deployed, uh, is uh, also stored in an auditable fashion. Uh, so uh, nothing can be tempered, nothing can be changed in hindsight. Uh, that also guarantees, of course, uh, that you don't run anything in your environment. You're not aware of when you actually implement Code Notary uh, in your complete uh, life cycle. Perfect. So now let's talk about the uh, the theme of today's discussion, which is you know the new feature that you folks are adding to Code Notary Cloud. What is that? Let's talk about that. When we started to uh, um, create the software bill of materials for our source code, but also for container images, uh, we got more and more interest from the customer base that said, okay, now I know what I have, or what I'm currently using, but I also want to have vulnerability scanning in place. I also want to have uh, the evidence of vulnerability scanning in place. And while you could already do it uh, with external uh, software, they were especially asking for a one, all in one solution. So only one command line, only one API they need to use um, and this command line should be able not just to create the software bill of materials, but also uh, start searching for vulnerabilities of each of the findings. And uh, we actually, of course, listened to our customers. So we integrated uh, the vulnerability scanning capabilities into our solution. So <clears throat> now you can use the same command you used before in your pipeline, for example, and uh, additionally to creating and finding out uh, about all the uh, dependencies you're using, you also get an just-in-time information about the vulnerabilities. And this information is also being stored with the artifact information as well. So that is uh, definitely a major step because now you have everything in one place. Uh, everything is being stored in one place and you can retrieve it based on the time. That means you can immediately check, or you could check for your most recent information, but you could also check what was the vulnerability uh, situation two weeks or four weeks ago uh, when we deployed uh, an application in the first place, same version, um, but different vulnerabilities were known. So all of this information is now at your fingertips. You just go to our dashboard or you use a command line interface and you find out about everything, why it has been um, checked all boxes two weeks ago and why it's not checking all boxes anymore today because a new vulnerability is known. It's called, you know, first kind of, you know, all-in-one software supply chain security and DevOps. Uh, we have talked about uh, this uh, earlier also that cloud native is complicated and, you know, developers, you know, they have to do so many things and security also adds one more layer. So uh, can you, first of all, explain, you know, what do you mean by an all-in-one software supply chain security and DevOps? Uh, and also, if you can also elaborate how you actually alluded to that in your previous answer, but how it makes DevOps operators, developers' lives easier so that they don't get overwhelmed with one more thing. Because sometimes when they get overwhelmed, that thing get ignored also and security cannot be ignored. Uh, absolutely. Uh, all in one is exactly to uh, to fight this issue. Uh, so as a developer, for sure, you have better things to do than to watch vulnerability scanners all the time to actually check for all your dependencies you're using. What you eventually need to do is delivering a software or delivering an application uh, in the, the most uh, or the best and, and the uh, fastest fashion. And uh, therefore, we from the start, we uh, focused on the DevOps pipelines and you can integrate us with one single uh, line in your um, pipeline. And this single line can now do uh, the notarization part, the verification part, the uh, software bill of materials report and referencing and the vulnerability scanning. 
So all of this information is not just there uh, during your pipeline run. It's also being stored permanently uh, in the Code Notary Cloud Platform. So you don't need to think about upfront what you want to store, uh, what uh, tools you need to use for the different uh, specific actions. And when you look at the landscape right now, there are many tools that can achieve the same results, but you need to use many different tools. You need to use many different platforms. And as, as, uh, exactly what you mentioned, you need to handle then the different versions of all these tools. You need to handle the different platform versions. Uh, you need to check for all the different licenses and, and so on. Uh, so now you uh, not just get a uh, all-in-one platform solution for uh, not from starting from notarization to software bill of materials to vulnerability scanning, um, but you also get the tamper-proof storage additionally uh, that makes sure that nothing can be changed. And that is definitely something completely new in the market. So, so far, it was more uh, used in, in the digital certificate world where you actually signed something, but you needed to have physical access or logical access uh, to uh, an application to verify. In our case, you can even do verification without having access to a file. Uh, you can also verify what is currently running in your Kubernetes environment without accessing it um, directly. And uh, this is now all part of the CodeNotary Cloud Platform. And something to mention as well is it's not just about the source code or the container image, it's also about the running container. So we can also look into the running container uh, if, for example, the bill of materials changed. Uh, so that also means your vulnerability and your risk changed eventually. As you were talking about earlier, the crisis that is going on in Europe, uh, there is a renewed focus on uh, cybersecurity. Can you also talk about what kind of concerns organizations should have when it comes to cybersecurity? And what role does it play to understand supply chain? And then, of course, uh, the timeliness of this uh, additional feature from Cloud Notary. The importance is that this crisis, um, I would say, causes two kinds of actions. One uh, kind we already knew in, from the past, like SolarWinds, so somebody's actively attacking your pipeline uh, through social um, activities or uh, maybe using some software flaws to get into your software pipeline, but eventually it produces some uh, code that your customers trust and your customers start to use and run. So you need to protect from this perspective. But what is now more uh, new, I would say, is that developers uh, show or change source code to point to the Ukraine crisis, for example. So suddenly there are messages in uh, the packages, uh, some functions um, are being broken, even for a, a single version. And that is something you need as a customer, you need to protect from as well. Uh, so it's not just about the active attack, it's also about what you are currently using and maybe the next version you're downloading breaks your functionality and breaks your whole application that you are currently deploying. So these things need to be checked before uh, they are embedded. And therefore this bill of materials, of course, gets much more attention because otherwise you don't know what you are currently using in your application. And uh, only the combination of having information about what you trust. So you have seen it already, you have used it already, you deployed it already, um, and uh, the integrity is still the same. Uh, that means everything that you're using uh, is definitely okay. So you, it's wanted, not unwanted code. And uh, in the, the, the crisis actually showed now, uh, and then I'm done judging in any way the cause of something, um, but it affected software companies as well as customers running software. Uh, and you need to consistently check what is now the new real, I would say, or the new uh, situation uh, of your whole deployments, things that actually went fine and, and uh, were completely uh, okay two minutes ago might just fail because of the latest version that has been deployed online and your application developer is just pulling this information out of the internet, out of a package manager and running in your uh, pipeline. And the second later you have it in your production. So there are of course many steps you need to protect. Um, but what we from a code note perspective say is 
at least you need to know everything that you can trust and everything you want to run into your in your environment. And if there is either uh, something you are unsure about, maybe a component or maybe a, a vulnerability, you need to be able in, in seconds instantly to find out if you are affected or not. And that is, I would say now, a change from a risk management perspective uh, that was not so critical before, uh, that you really want to know in a second if your e-commerce shop is at risk, your uh, main application is at risk, or it's just a testing or demo application you don't really uh, use much, or it's not really of value for your business. This question is less about solutions, it's more about practices. Uh, of course, there are solutions. Uh, we just talked about one. Can you also share some kind of, I mean, the best practices word is very, very value loaded, but uh, uh, what organizations can do in today's world to at least, you know, have a culture of having security minded approach so that, you know, these solutions, you know, they are not silver bullet. They cannot solve all the problems if you are not approaching it correctly. So if you can share, you know, how people should approach their whole environments and workload uh, to secure at least from people's perspective. So for sure, what you mentioned as a security mindset, I think is also the most important part. And it starts with simple things that you actually shouldn't have simple passwords. You shouldn't share them uh, with the whole world or accidentally share uh, some SSH keys or some uh, other components. So there are um, a lot of open source projects that already support based on these policies, like are there any secrets exposed or any uh, passwords exposed? But it also about the software versions itself. Uh, so uh, you need to make sure that you have a policy in place uh, that defines what are the versions you support. And you should also have um, a best practice of not using latest. So whenever you use latest, the next version, uh, there's a build happening, you pulling the latest version. So you need to have a, a policy in place uh, that you define the version that you are okay with, and it shouldn't be latest. Um, and then, of course, it's also about the vulnerability scanning itself. There's no way uh, to uh, avoid vulnerability scanning. Uh, you cannot just sit on, uh, on, on a crap or on a, on a full text search and, and try to find uh, certain uh, snippets or information. You need to have some sort of automated uh, vulnerability testing in place that you check against security advisories. And um, what I also, of course, recommend is to subscribe uh, to uh, the the websites and the services that also provide you with all the security information, um, but also having these policy uh, policies in place from a logical perspective, um, but also ideally automated uh, using open source or using other uh, products that check what you can't deploy, uh, what is the behavior of a certain application, so the normal behavior, and what is something you definitely want to block. Uh, to give you an example, I would always block that somebody can enter a container, a running container image. And the moment, the moment you allow something like this, somebody can completely change the application itself. Um, and the last thing is, of course, never to download or never to just use some code. And I can give you uh, an example, a customer of us ran into, uh, they were looking for Log4j uh, checking tools. And one of the open source uh, checkers, they were of course called all oh, log4j, scanner log4j checker, log4j mitigator and so on, uh, was malware itself. So you need to very, be very careful, also very open-minded and, and thinking out of the box, okay, somebody just named it as a potentially good application, but the reality is that it's a application that is just uh, either containing ransomware or doing others kind of more um, uh, subtle, uh, subtle things uh, to your environment. So also being very careful about that. Uh, not everything that is stored publicly and available publicly is uh, with a good purpose in mind. One more thing, uh, a bit on a sophisticated note, is when we look at cloud. Uh, since you know it's very easy to get you know some service started, uh, a lot of cloud based happen because folks, you know, they get the resources but they don't use. They have a lot of orphan resources sitting there. Uh, also some frameworks, some library were used in a previous version, it was depreciated in the latest, but there's, so can you also talk about it's more like, you know, uh, 
keep an eye on the not the hygiene is more like you know when christmas season comes in you, you go to the attic clean all the stuff there so also getting rid of orphan resources which you're not using because that's where you're not tracking you don't know the vulnerabilities but it's still running in your systems actually that is a very important point the hygiene of your software and your package managers um, and we ran into this situations also quite often when the customer says hey we only store uh, applications or packages that we trust and then you ask okay but do you also re remove them when you don't trust them anymore or they are outdated or uh, deprecated and then you find out oh no actually we only store when we trust we don't have a cleanup job uh, that actually uh, checks for deprecated packages so that is definitely something that uh, i can only recommend and uh, either you're using certificate based solutions or you do using uh, trust based solutions like us uh, to also deprecate and unsupport parts whenever you create a new version, for example, or you have it in a in a more in the context. Uh, I, I bring up the log4j example again, but log4j is not always bad. It could also be in a setup where you need it. Uh, also, you need the vulnerable, the vulnerable version of it, um, but it's not exposed in the way you are using it. So you also need to have some more con security context awareness, I would say. Um, and in th that also automatically means uh, that when you store artifacts uh, as trusted to make sure to uh, also note where it is trusted. So in what context is it trusted? Dennis, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about this new feature, but also in general, uh, the best practices of what folks can do to at least, you know, have security mindset so that these tools can be used uh, better thanks for those insights as well and as usual i'd love to have you back on the show thank you thank you very much pleasure to be here